continuing with chapter 11, the percentage chapters, uh, we also have a business application. Uh, we've been doing uh, simple interest and uh, now we're going to move into compound interest. But there's also this question number 55 that you need a chart to do and that chart is provided in your book or it's provided with the link with Math Excel. But it helps you figure out the number of days if you were trying to do a simple interest problem and needed to know how many days that your uh, money had been used. So this takes us from the example I have, November 19th to March the 25th. So there's this nice chart that tells you what day of the year November 19th is. So you look in your chart, find November 19th, see how many days were left in that year from November 19th to um, the end of the year, December 31st. Then plus, see what day March 25th is on, how many days there would be uh, between January 1st and March 25th. Add those together and that helps us uh, with that of the days. So again, you need a chart for that. Okay, then number 56, the last thing in your uh, chapter 11 work was using compound interest. We have this formula and it will be provided on Math Excel and on your test as well, so you do not have to memorize this. Now you may need to memorize the simple interest formula though, so uh, be aware of that I is PRT. This one's a little harder to memorize, so you don't have to memorize this one. Uh, let me tell you what each variable stands for. The A is how much your money accumulates to. It's the future value after this formula has been applied. So the future amount or the uh, accumulated amount equals the principal, the starting amount, the money that you start with uh, in your savings or for your loan. This is just the number one. Plus the rate of interest. So you want to change that to a decimal as always. Divided by N. Now N may be a new, new thing in this formula. We've not seen it before in this class. N is the number of times that your money is compounded per year. So if it says that it's compounded semi-annually, that means two times a year they add your interest into it. If it's quarterly, they add your interest four times a year. Um, monthly would be 12. If it's just annually, that's just one time a year, and so on. So N is how many times your interest is added on each year. And then we use that number again in the exponent, so same thing here, and then T is how many years time. All right, this is probably the question I get the most on um, my online class. Uh, students have questions about this because it's usually something to do with getting this in your calculator correctly. So first of all, let's fill in the values that we talked about here, and we'll talk about how we punch it in. So this is a problem where we've got $5,000 as our starting amount for P. And it's at 4%, so our rate will be 0.04 for two years. So the T amount is 2, and it's compounded semi-annually. So the N value semi-annually means twice a year, so we'll use a 2 there. So that gives us um, this when it's put into the equation. And notice all of this, oh, I forgot to add the 5,000 for P. So this is uh, the values we need to punch in our calculator. Now, your calculator does no order of operations, so punched in correctly, your calculator can't handle this. But here's what happens sometimes. Students type in 5,000, they usually type in the parentheses, okay? 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 2 raised to the second power times 2. You type it in like that, your calculator is going to do all of this work raise that to the second power, and then double that answer, which isn't what we're looking for. We need your calculator to take this to the fourth power, the two times two power. So we need to either mentally know that there is a four there, or tell our calculator to put a parenthesis around the exponent. So our calculator knows both of these belong in the exponent position, not just as a multiplier at the end. All right, so punch them in your calculator, directly say 5,000, parenthesis, 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 2, close your parentheses. Then to get this little up arrow button, some calculators have a key that looks like that. Some of you have an X to the Y button or a Y to the X button, something that tells you it's, it's superscripted, it's a, up, an exponent. So hit your exponent button. And then parenthesis again, 2 times 2, and close that parenthesis at the end, then equals. So you should get $5,412.16 to the nearest cent. And then um, always look back to see if your answer seems reasonable. We had $5,000 to start with, so it should have grown. If you get an answer like $200, you know something's wrong. Or if it turns into $7,000 or some large amount that you weren't expecting. 
So that seems reasonable for two years. Okay, number 57, we're going to use that formula again, but this time we're going to, we're going to know what we're trying to accumulate to and we're going to work backwards to see what we need to invest. The problem says the dearies plan to retire in 10 years and expect to need $600,000. How much must they invest now to accomplish that goal if interest is paying 6.4%? So same formula, it is compounding, and you'll know to use this formula the directions will probably just tell you directly to do that, but, uh, but the reason you would also know to use this is it will say something about compound in a certain way. This problem should have said how it was compounded. I may not have copied it down. But if it's a compound interest problem, you will have to know how many times the money is rolled over. Um, it was compounded annually. I didn't write that on the board, but your problem says compounded annually. All right, so the word compounded is in the problem if you need to use this formula. All right, so on this problem, uh, we're wanting to come out with 600000 as the A value, as the accumulated value. So it belongs over on this side of the equation. We don't know the P value or how much we need to start with. The rate of interest was 6.4%, so I need to go to left to put that in the uh, equation as a decimal. N is how many times it's rolled over per year, how many compoundings per year. This problem was an annually, so that means one time a year. So one, we use that again here, and then times how many years? It was a 10-year problem, so times 10. Now remember, your calculator needs you to either parenthesis that together or just mentally go ahead and know that one times 10 is just a 10 exponent there. Okay, so we can do this part together on our calculator, but then because it's uh, times by an unknown variable p, we will need to divide that on each side. So whatever I get from that process, that value, we'll need to divide it on each side. So it's really going to be 600,000 divided by this. And that's what we have in our calculator. 600,000 divided by parentheses parenthesis button, 1 plus 0 0.064 raised to the 10th power, close all that. Sorry, misprint, mistype.
groups of people, like um, uh, clusters of people. So you'll, you'll read into the problem if you see that they're being grouped into different clusters. Random, maybe going to the phone book and picking the tenth name through the phone book, so that would be a random, or systematic, or stratified is what we're going to see in this number 58. It's where by different types, like you're looking for, maybe you have um, uh, different age groups. You have a group of 12-year-olds uh, and a group of 13-year-olds, so you can put them in different strata and then pick between those. Uh, so number 58 says a group of people are classified according to race, so that's a different type of strata they've been grouped by a certain category. And then random samples are taken from each group, so, so stratified um, would be the answer to my sample problem from that Excel. Okay, number 59. Then we go into the ways that we organize the data. After we've got this data, how do we organize it? Say we've um, talked to 2,000 different people and we want to try to organize out our data. A way to do that is with uh, what we we'll call frequency distribution. So uh, this example on number 59 says you've got, um, well, the list on uh, the paper has all kinds of, um, Oh, it has 50, 50 6th grade IQ scores and asks us to put it into this frequency distribution. So we actually have to look through the whole list and try to count out how many fit into each one of these categories. And that's what a frequency distribution does, just helping you to sort through your data and try to organize it. So it gave me the uh, ranges. Um, this was pre-made for you. Some, some of your homework, you maybe had to do this yourself. But here it's already categorized. Look for everyone between 78 and 86. So I actually go through here carefully one at a time and see how many fit into that category and then I make uh, a total from that. So it's just counting. Frequency distribution is just counting. When I'm done, I should have a total of 50 students. There's supposed to be 56 graders. So that's how I'm going to check on myself and make sure I didn't overlook. It's very easy to do. Okay, so I'll stop there and think I'm in the next segment.